We saved the best for last, really. It's a funny question, but we had to ask Jeff Skunk Baxter about that Muppets character that kind of looks like him. Uh, totally silly. Uh, what's the deal with everyone asking me about the Muppet character that looks like you? Uh, my best guess is, is I did a lot of studio work for Sesame Street uh, and, and Jim Henson. I think when they decided to have a band, you know, a, a Muppet band, they picked um, the different folks that were in the studio band and made caricatures of them. So I, I, I see my, uh, some of my colleagues in that, in that band, you know, Mike Baird, Animal Drummer, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I, and um, um, David Foster playing keyboards. I just, I think that's where it all came from. In high school, what kind of a, what kind of a teenager were you and what were you listening to in high school? So high school. Okay. That I went to boarding school. Okay. Um, that prep, age group. prep school. Yeah. 13 to, to uh, like 18. Right. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Um, I was listening to everything. Uh, like all genres. All genres. Because my, my roommate for my, the last two years was the bass player in, the, in the, the, the band that we had at school, which was a really good band. It was so good that we were getting asked to play at all the different girls' schools around the area. And because we were young and, and crazy and was already getting into trouble, the dean of students became our manager and booked the band so he could keep an eye on us. And we gave him 5%. It was great. It was fantastic. But and we were listening to everything. And one of the Bibles, musical Bibles that I had under my arm was Howard Roberts, Color Him Funky and HR is a Dirty Guitar Player. I learned and I transcribed every single note of all of that stuff. And then later on, I got a chance to meet Howard. And actually, we taught together at the... Um, at the uh, Guitar Institute of Technology. But I also listened to classical music. I listened to everything. Because in Mexico, with the, Mexico was a very eclectic place musically. Everything from umpa bands to rock and roll. The Mexican rock bands were great. I played in a number of Mexican rock and roll bands. Great drummers. That's when I made Abraham Laboreal. We had a surf band together when we were kids. I was 11, he was 12. What? You know, yo yeah, yeah. Called the Tarantulas. <laughs> yeah, we... Um, I grew growing up in that kind of eclectic atmosphere. My dad's record collection, my mom's record collection. I brought a lot of that with me. So I listened to everything, everything. So you were known as a music guy in high school, obviously. I mean, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did you, uh, you weren't allowed to have a mustache and beard back then, were you? No, no. I don't think and, I've ever seen a picture of you without your, and my, uh, and my grade point average was 6.0 because all I wanted to do was practice. That's it. That's it. Uh, and then, then when I got into trouble playing, they took away my guitar. And you know how that, you know, that's, you know how that is. Take away the so, thing he loves. Yeah. So I said, okay, then we're not going to play any more school dances. And after one semester, uh, uh, the student body got together and petitioned the other dean of students and said, this sucks because we're not, nobody would go to the dances. I mean, yeah, they wanted to meet girls, but it was no fun. Mm -hmm. so they said okay and that's when the other dean said okay here's what i'm gonna do you know i'm gonna be your manager <laughs> uh, you know i'll drive you to the gigs in the pickup truck we'll go do the work i'll take i said well you should take some money for it so i'll take five percent richard skelly says further to a number of other comments i believe jeff largely taught himself the rudiments of missile delivery technology and then came up with the bright idea of how to improve the efficiency of missiles um, in generally, that's true. Um, I guess I was sort of an autodidact still am. Um, I spent a tremendous amount of time reading defense publications because, um, as I was working in the technology areas for Roland and Akai and Fender and Gibson and Audio Technica and these different companies in the beginning, of the digital revolution, the, the, the bow wave for all of that, frankly, was in the military. The, 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 the military had the money 
and the time and the, and the need to do the research and development into uh, digital technologies. So I was reading all of that. And as I was reading it, I was gaining a lot of knowledge about defense systems in general. And one day um, I, got a, I got, ran into uh, Nick Cook, who uh, Nick was the senior aviation editor for Jane's Defense Weekly in London. We had friends in common. And he gave me an article that said you could track the space shuttle with an S-band radar. A radar, I, I'm not sure everybody understands exactly how it works, but it's pretty simple. You send an electronic signal at a particular frequency out, and if it bounces back, you can detect that. And also, with some good technology, you can actually glean information from it. So the S-band is a particular, there's L-band, there's R-band, there's X-band, there's S-band, there's different parts of the frequency spectrum, the different radars. So I thought, wow, that's interesting. Track of an S-band radar. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the Navy uses an S-band radar in their air defense system. So then I went over to talk to a buddy of mine over at JPL, uh, Caltech, and said, John, can you do some math for me? And he said, yeah, okay. So I gave him some time and he come back and says, what are you trying to do? He says, it looks like you're looking to track something that's not the space shuttle. And I said, well, here's the radar cross section. Here's the mass here, you know, stuff. And he said, I said, can, can I do what I want to do? And he said, yep. So then I wrote a paper on how to convert that Navy air defense system into doing missile defense and then gave it to a congressman that I was working with, uh, especially on, in, on the counterterrorism area. When I was with LAPD, I was on their anti-terrorism division. And he sent it to the vice chairman of the Armed Services Committee. When I said, what is this guy from Lockheed or Boeing or Ray <laughs> or something? No, he was a guitar player for the Doobie Brothers. So I get a call. <clears throat> and he says, would you be willing to serve uh, on the Armed Services Committee as a consultant for missile defense? I said, okay. I said, well, I hope so, because we just classified your paper. And now you have to come and go through all the, the, uh, the kabuki. But you're going to come here. You're going to TDY to the Pentagon. You're going to work for General Mal O'Neill over at the Strategic Defense and Instrument Organization. And you're going out to Lawrence Livermore to work on Brilliant Pebbles. I said, okay, great. I'm in. Sounds fun, like fun to me. That is crazy. <laughs> no. But true. Well, yeah, but to a guy like me, I mean, if someone had asked me, can you, can you ask him to explain it a little bit more? I know it's way more complicated than that, uh, <laughs> the work you do. But I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly happy by some of the fans that asked about that side of your life. Because I always go, oh, tell me about reeling in, or whatever, some song, any song, or minute by minute by the doobies. But the fact that they were interested, I thought, good on you guys. You know what I mean? I like that. Well, and it's not that rare. <clears throat> I mean, certainly at the time, I was probably one of the few people that was doing that. I mean, Hedy Lamar, she came up with a concept for the frequency hopping radar. Her, her husband was a physicist, but she came up with the concept. Why do people, you think, let me interrupt you for a second. Why do people, with Hedy Lamar especially, I remember listening to a phone call that it's on, um, um, it's on YouTube. And I remember listening to this long interview that, that, that he was doing with her. And I think it was that interview that she said, you know, people still don't believe that that was, that I did that. And I'm going, why? Because they don't, they have a problem believing it because they don't fit in to the, 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 the mold, the vision that, that they have and their ability to conceive past that. Did you get that a little bit? Cause you're just, Oh like yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. What do you know about anything? I, you're just a dumb guitar player. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fine. Uh, you do what you do. Uh, Paul Rivera, um, is, uh, from Rivera amplifiers been doing work with the air force. Brian may, got his PhD in astrophysics. His thesis coach was a good friend of my ex-boss at Lawrence Livermore, 
who just left the uh, University of Rochester Physics Department. Um, Paul Reed Smith, do you know Paul, uh, Paul Reed Smith, the guitar builder? Uh, his dad was one of the founders of Raytheon, Jack Smith. He came to me one day and I said, I have this, inc this idea for underwater acoustic detection. I said, okay, well, let's look at it. I looked at it and went, okay, pick up the phone, call Admiral Carr over at the office of uh, uh, Naval Research. and said, Nev, you got to check this out. So we brought everything down there. They checked it out. We put it out on a ship and bingo, kicked ass. So now he has a company called Digital Harmonic that does a number of... <coughs> a number of things, a lot of work with some government contract. So I think the fact that musicians and, and John Boyd, who came up with the OODA loop concept, are you familiar with the OODA loop? It's a, a little algorithm for problem solving called observe, orient, decide, and act. It's, it's applicable to just about anything, from cleaning dog poop off a blanket to figuring out how to do a radar intercept. He came up with a concept called creation and, and destruction, analysis and synthesis, where you break things down into their, a problem into its smallest components and put it together in a different way. Perfect example, uh, Paco Bell's Cannon, which you've heard a thousand times. Oh, yeah. I used to play and, it on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. And the nice lady in the white thing with the harp and the, at the wedding. Yeah. You, okay. But let it be me by the Everly brothers. And when a man loves a woman by Percy Sledge, that's Paco Bell's canon. It's the same song. It's in, even in the same key. Somebody. And now analyze the small parts and reassemble it in a different way. And the one thing musicians can do, and John Boyd knew about this and understood this is they think in a nonlinear fashion, they apply a multi-level template to everything they do. Cause if you're playing music, <laughs> you're thinking about melody, time, tempo, you're reading, you're listening to lyrics, you're, you're, you're digging back into your, your vocabulary. I mean, you're thinking on multiple levels at the same time. Yeah. That gives you the tools to solve problems that in a nonlinear way that many people don't have. That's why my first grandson, I made sure that uh, he was wearing headphones an hour a day listening to Mozart because I wanted to wire his brain because of the cadences and the way that Mozart had constructed the musical template that he used to construct his music was uh, beneficial to rewiring the brain to be able to think in a nonlinear fashion. Is that why the Mozart effect that the whole series that yes. And, and people say, ah, well, you know, that's bullshit. Well, no, it's not because the power of music is such people don't really understand. See, the problem is everybody's a drug addict. They don't understand that they are addicted to uh, nepo, epo, epinephrine, adrenaline, vasopressin, oxytocin, uh, uh, serotonin. These drugs, which are the neurotransmitters in your brain, are the the cocktails, the results of the cocktails, the different ones, are define your emotions. So you know what music can do. My God, after they played Bach, Stokata, and Fugue in D minor, they burned a goddamn church down. And when they performed Stravinsky's Ride of Spring, they looted six blocks of downtown Paris. Scared the crap out of everybody. So much vasopressin and adrenaline. Fear. Fear brought on by a mixture of frequencies. And, and this is a whole other discussion we can get to. Charlie Towns, uh, the, the, the inventor, the guy that won the Nobel Prize for inventing the laser. He and I were, were colleagues together at Livermore. Human spirit, coherent oscillation. That's a whole other discussion. But the emotional part of all this, yeah. the ability to think and the, and the, the, the neurotransmitters that promote that, some people are able to secrete those neurotransmitters and help them apply a template for nonlinear thinking. And those people are definitely musicians. Wow. Because if you look at what a musician has to do, <clears throat> there's nothing linear about can you, that. 
Can you, if I'm interested in this whole philosophy, this whole thing, is there a book I, I, I should read on yeah. this? Yeah. Uh, it's the biography of Lieutenant Colonel John Boyd by Robert Caron. Uh, and it's an interesting book. It's about a, 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 a young man who joined the Air Force, didn't have a superbly high EQ, managed to invent the OODA loop, managed to, you know, he told the fighter pilots that they're a bunch of wusses. Air combat has nothing to do with anything other than managing energy management algorithms. Wrote a table. They call him 60, 40 second boy. He said, if you can stay on my tail for 40 seconds, I'll pay you $1,000. Never happened. Never happened. <clears throat> he knew it so intimately and understood the physics of flight and aerodynamics. Then he wrote papers. And, of course, a lot of people hated him because he was always right. <laughs> and you read his biography, and it's a great story. But then at the end of the biography, there's an explanation of analysis and synthesis, what we talked about, destruction and creation, what the OODA loop is and how to apply it, and some of his writings on <clears throat> his concept of destruction and creation, multi-level, non-linear thinking. It's a great read. So share our videos, like them, subscribe to our channel, and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care.